If you're going to make biofertilisers on farm, then there is a few fundamentals you need to line up. The first one is having a proper fermentation tank, clean water, and energy supply for the microbes that you're culturing, and that's usually molasses. And then we want to make sure we have a starter culture and some nutrients. So it's not too difficult, it's a little bit like home brewing. You can kind of make a pretty consistent product if you follow a bit of a process. Righto, we're good to go. These are our storage tanks. They're 16,000 litre tanks. And these are our brewing tanks. They're 9,000 litre tanks. Now these tanks have got two outlets, one at the bottom, they're a cone bottom tank. The outlet that's just up the wall a little bit has got a 45 degree elbow inside the tank. So when I suck it out of the bottom and pump it back into that one, that swirls the tank and mixes it. The 9,000 litre tank is continu continuously mixing the entire time we're making and that's our main mixing process. The tank that we have that we put all our ingredients into is just a very convenient size and height to put bags and drop liquid into and just work around. Right, so you'll see as I go along, um, all the ingredients go in here. We make the starter culture in a thousand litre shuttle. It is molasses, milk and kefir that we buy from the supermarket. So to make the starter culture, we first put 100 litres of molasses mixed in with water into the shuttle. Into that we add 150 litres of milk in powder form. Chuck it all in, no worries at all. And 14 to 15 kilos of kefir from the supermarket. Because it's a food grade product, it comes with a labelled description of what's in the bottle and it has to, what, what, what's on the label has to be in, in there because it's human food grade. Whereas if you use cow paunch for instance, which I did for many years, as your starter culture as, as where the microbes are coming from, every cow is different. So this helps to make it more reliably repeatable. Every brew we make smells the same, looks the same and we mix all that into a shuttle make sure it's well mixed and then put the lid on it fairly loosely to allow air to come in and out if it needs to. Takes two weeks to brew. Yeah, and once it's matured it's, it's very shelf stable, can stay there for a couple of years. So what the guys have just made is a starter culture. So this is the base culture that can be used in any other biofertilizer recipe. You can even clean your toilet with it. There's all kinds of things people do with it, but it's the starter culture based on that kefir. You'll notice that the guys have left a little bit of space at the top of the shuttle. So whenever you're doing any of this kind of fermentation, it's a good idea to leave a bit of space for gas exchange in the top of the vessel, whether it's that size or this size or a small barrel. How long will that take before it's ready? You'd suggest two weeks. About two weeks. <laughs> and how are you tracking it to see whether it's doing the job? Uh, we'll never We've never checked it and it always just smells right when we open the tap to brew. Do you check the pH on it? No, never. So the pH should run under four. Mm. So if the pH runs under four, everyone see the sort of light brown colour it was in there? That's sort of what you're looking for, sweet smell. And that's, that's the key, and you said it, Carol, is the smell. Yes. Use your nose. If it smells like shit, it is shit. The next step is making um, a biofert, which is minerals with um, an inoculant. Um, and we, we were making today a P plus, which is a phosphorus heavy brew. So we add 900 litres of molasses to about 5,000 litres of water, give or take, before we start adding the other ingredients. One of the problems I have with the molasses is this frothing. So a little bit of canola oil I've found is, is the trick. It doesn't need a lot, but yeah, a bit of canola oil helps to deaden the froth. After that, we add nine bags of MKP for our 9,000 litre tank. So this is MAP with a K instead of an A. It's a soluble phosphorus without the nitrogen. Because you guys are all used to MAP, but we don't want too much nitrogen in these ferments, so we swap it out for an MKP. It's very difficult to fully solubilise something like DAP or MAP. Whereas this stuff, it dissolves in water more completely. 
The key thing is you want to dissolve it all nicely so that the microbes, as they start to eat up the culture, they can easily get into this stuff and it doesn't just settle to the bottom. We add 36 kilos of trace at total. This one here is just an all-in-one trace element product. It's giving the microbes a range of nutrients to improve the culturing. All of them will be complex or chelated. Every step along the way, we want just that in the tank with water mixing before we add it to our big tank. So we can make sure it's very diluted before it hits any other of the ingredients. After that, we add our 900 litre Keffer inoculant. If you want to have a look at the starter culture, this is one that's been made already. So this is starter culture ready to go in the bathroom. You want to have a look at the yeast, because there's yeast on top of it. Have a smell. It's running at 3.8. So that's what you'd expect. So that's stable. So that would be shelf stable if you kept the lid on a couple of years. With it, we add our milk powder. We add brewer's yeast and our kelp. This is the seaweed tri kelp. Sea salt obviously has a spectrum of micronutrients in it as well for the culturing microbes. Then the last step is adding our solumag and our thiocal and we just make sure that the whole tank's up to 9,000 litres by the end. Who's heard of Thiocal? All right, so Thiocal is a liquid calcium fertiliser. It's quite well known in horticulture, but not known in broad acre at all. It's a liquid calcium without nitrogen because the main fertiliser used in horticulture with calcium is calcium nitrate, but we don't want nitrates in here. So the next best one is calcium thiocyte. It's kind of like a liquid gypsum, but it's really soluble. So if you want a liquid gypsum that's truly soluble calcium, that's the product. Solumag, so that's a magnesium. If you had a high potassium, high magnesium soil type, would you put that in? No, you can leave that out. So again, as long as you're following the fundamentals, you can mix and match. And once we've had it mixing really well, it's well combined, we turn off everything and we tape up the top of the tank which has a fermentation lock in the top of it. As the microbes grow in population, they uh, combine the minerals in the brew into their bodies and they uh, burp and fart <laughs> out methane and that must escape the tank. Yeah, and the gas creates such a pressure that it needs an outlet. We just don't want any air coming in, but we want all the gas to be able to get out. It usually stops bubbling after a couple of weeks and then it takes another four to six weeks to mature. We start brewing in December and that brew will be all of the liquid we need for sowing and we'll brew another lot in um, February, March um, and that will be the start of our foliars. And once sowing's finished and we've got some tanks free from all the sowing liquid, we'll brew again for our second or third round of foliars, depending on how heavy we need to put it out. We brew when we need to, not worry about time of year. Once it's matured, we're then able to use it either in our liquid inject system on the air seeder or as a foliar spray with the, with the sprayer. As a liquid inject, we put it out at 20 litres to the hectare, at 100 litres of water with that. And as a foliar spray, we put it out at 10 to 15 litres to the hectare, and that goes out at 60 litres to the hectare of water.